do you reckon? What do you reckon we should start on here? We should maybe tackle our question that we came out of, which is, are we still alternative? What are your thoughts on that? Well, alternative to what? What would you say makes us alternative? And like, has that changed since our first episode? You know, we, we first need to sort of break down, you know, what alternative means in this context. And it would basically just be like a synonym for, you know, different. And as Megan said, what are we different to? You know, just looking at the initial plan in terms of getting artists, you know, the local artists at the Winston and artists that weren't being playlisted on radio, that would be the first point in that it's it's alternative or different to what radio is doing. And then also in that they're not really featuring the, the, the artists that are still sort of on the come up. And uh, also in terms of approach as well, where a lot of the mainstream sort of media outlets generally go for a more controversial approach, which in turn, you know, then gets, you know, the, the high numbers and all that because people like controversy. But then with us, it's just sort of about, it's about telling the artist's story and, you know, being neutral, you know, no, like, opinions from our side per se, but, like, you know, just getting the artist to tell their story and it's all about them. So then we'd be different or alternative to the mainstream approach, which is, you know, it doesn't really, you know, consist of, you know, the, the sort of guests that we generally have. Do you think there's a cap in terms of an artist's reach where we would like maybe not interview them because they're too mainstream, they're not actually underground? Or do you think we're we're just as open to giving them a spot? I would say like on my side, I would say we we I'd say we're open because I feel like there are people who have a different experience to how to to someone who's still on the come up they have maybe certain types of knowledge that maybe you know someone who started out yesterday may not have at that point when we're interviewing them so a person like that who is in the mainstream could come through with a different perspective and could also be a source of knowledge and inspiration you know to someone who might aspire to become as big as someone who is in the mainstream, it would be sort of like a portal for them to be like, okay, so this is what I need to look out for. You know, so-and-so went through this experience. Um, How do I navigate around that? And it's people who would be in the mainstream that would have the knowledge to some of those things. So I would say limiting ourselves and not, excuse me, not having those people, you know, in the mainstream on the show would sort of be like shooting ourselves in the foot a bit. But at the same time, there needs to be like a balance. It's not really, you don't want to find us now just doing mainstream artists all the way. You know, it still mm. needs to be very much of the, the the fabric that we sort of started off with and that it does cater to, you know, the, the upcoming artist. Mm. I don't know. What do you rate? Yeah, I think we shouldn't put a, a, an official cap on it. I really enjoy the guests where were maybe their first um, podcast interview ever. I really enjoy those ones because, like, I try and be extra caring Mm. to to give them, like, a good entry into this type of media. And, like, if they go any further than that interview, then, like, essentially we're part of their history and their origin story. Mm. So that's, like, I really like the very underground (laughs) ones. But I, I don't mind. I don't mind having some of the bigger people who want to maybe maybe it's nice for a bigger artist to come and have a more low key experience because yeah. we're not like press press, but we <laughs> yeah, we're still true. public attention in a way. Yeah. So is this something for someone to consider when they're starting? When they're starting, maybe like a podcast. Is it something that they'll have to sort of think about? And that you know, do I? have do do i want to sort of you know go more the mainstream routes and pick out some of the elements that are used in the mainstream media or is it something that someone can just sort of wing and maybe find themselves through the process or what would you rate i think it's definitely a 
something that you're going to have to make a proper decision about because you, you can choose whether or not to have guests at all in the first place. Um, and then you can choose like what level of guests are you going to book versus the level of your audience in terms of their interests or, you know, what they're here to discover. But, you know, if you want to appeal to the the wider audience, then you're going to have to be really, you're going to have to be ready to deal with like big personalities who want to bring in like more sensational content. Do you, is it something that is like difficult to do? Because with the way that she's saying it, like it's it's almost like it's it's as easy as just being like, hey guys, we're going to go the mainstream routes and we're going to go for controversy and like do the big you know, like personalities come through from the get-go? Is it possible to sort of reach that kind of, you know, or like what sort of does it boil down to, you know, like if if you had to look at your experience and stuff, is it something where you can just wake up today and be like, hey, guys, so this is what we're going to be doing, controversy, 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 big personalities and stuff, or does it have to be sort of built over time type thing? I think it depends on what type of initial network you have access to yeah. because if you are um, using podcasting as your entrance into the media, then you can't really rely on as wide of a social network to like pull from. Whereas if you've been maybe working in another area of the industry and then you transfer over to podcasting, you already have those relationships. Mm. And, like, if you've been doing that for a long time, then maybe those artists um, that you interviewed when they were very, like, fresh, maybe they've grown and they've gotten, like, bigger since. So you can call them back when when they're at, like, the upper echelon. <laughs> you know? This this reminds me of, like, uh, something that I also i have come to, to, to hate now. And we speak often about it behind the scenes. And we never wrote it down, actually, here. But... Something you said there just reminded me of it about what the actual difference is between a podcast and a vlog. Because you get a lot of people right now who are coming into the scene and they're like, I am starting a podcast and you can basically catch it on YouTube and all of that there. Is there, like, what would you say the difference is? Well, like, okay, podcasting is an alternative to radio and that type of audio broadcasting. So it's kind of like personalized radio. So even more personalized than online radio streams. The vlog with the visual aspects, that kind of brought in the video podcast as like a combination of those two. So I don't know, for me, podcasting, the audio format on its own, is enough. <laughs> it is enough, especially if you don't have a fully fleshed out team and like everyone's got their own bunch of responsibilities and they're all qualified in those fields specifically. You know, if you're just a couple people who like to do a bunch of stuff, <laughs> then you will have to kind of maybe just stick to the strength of that team and not try and add this extra layer to your your content when it's not really needed like you can't really avoid doing visual we even do visual with our promo mm. but yeah it's like the long form audio where people want to listen and maybe they want to do something else mm. because the video podcast like it needs that extra points of attention you got to be able to sit down whereas we want to be able to be on the drive with you yeah yeah so in order for it to be a podcast, does it then have to be, can I do like a visual, maybe a question that might even come up, can I go down the route of doing like a visual podcast, a visual podcast, Um, in order for it to be called a podcast, would I also then have to have an audio version of that? So can I have my stuff go up, say, for example, on Spotify, uh, the general podcasting places? Um, but then also have it be on YouTube and have the visual thing in order for it to be to qualify as being a podcast or is it just tighter than that? Yeah, good question. I feel like 
audio is the primary medium and then the visual accompanies that. Yeah. Like it's an extra level that you can add on. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the audio for me is the is the the is what main makes thing. The podcast. But yeah. if you're making look if you're making a video podcast yeah. and you're not exporting that audio and then uploading that, you you know you could you could feed two birds with one squirt right there. Like you don't yeah. you're wasting if you're not doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. In terms of we were speaking about you know the, the kinds of guests um, that someone might want to have and you know what what is sort of the most efficient way. Um, to sort of communicate and maybe get the guests on or even vice versa maybe if a guest does sort of want to to come on 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 your show and you start getting people like you know wanting to 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 pay a visit and, and drop in and stuff you know what would you sort of say would be the best sort of you know practices when it comes to that okay so if you're in terms of reaching out to find guests i would say talk to them where they already are so if, if you follow them on Instagram and they're posting, then they're active there, just do that. But also maybe have an official paper trail or digital paper trail in terms of send that, that email to do the confirmed official booking and to maybe give a brief about how to be a really cool guest on the show. You know, things that people might need to know to make them comfortable. Mm. Give them a brief. So as part of that brief, would you say like you need to explain to the artist that, um, you know, this is how you become a good guest sort of, you know, you need to do this, this, this and that. Does that not sort of take away from the experience, would you say? Like, for example, you know how like when we talk and I mentioned to you that it never used to bug me, but it's sort of starting to bug me a bit, but not really that much when you'll find a guest, someone comes on the show and then when it's time to release the episode, we're doing all the pushing on our side. And the guest, you'll go on their pages and there's just no mention at all about the episode being up and all that. So when you mention a brief, is that something that would then need to be covered in the brief and that, listen, man, you know, it would be nice for you to share the episode, but you don't have to. And even in the brief, is it something along those lines? Do you have to word it maybe like that? Or do you have to be like, you have to share it? Or <laughs> can they have an option like, you know what, it's up to you? You know, what are the best practices here for someone wanting to to explore that? For us, if we want to keep it underground, then we have to be aware that most of our guests have not had official press training. So we have to be uh, strict enough to function, but like not unappealing as in we don't want them to think they're not going to have a good time and this is going to be too intense especially if it might be their first time so in terms of briefing it's more like let me set out the expectations I'm not going to coach you on how to be a good guest but I'm going to tell you this is how we typically function so if there's anything about you that might clash with that you can at least prepare it if you let's say if you were recording on zoom with us and we had our video on and you didn't want to be on camera that might be something that you have a preference for mm. you know or maybe you have the opposite where you want to actually see people's faces when you're talking to them and then we would make an exception and put our video on mm. or maybe you have certain data constraints yeah. So the the fact that we have a, a protocol of doing our recording, we can at least let you know about it so you can prepare. Okay, we, we use Zoom. Yeah. Um, if you do have this type of mic, it would be great. If you don't, these are some options that like anyone would have just because you have a cell phone kind of thing. So it's about making sure that people are able to have the interview successfully. Mm. Not about like managing their personality or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if I were a guest on someone's show, one of the, the main things that I would try and do would be to um, basically release something on my side that basically lets people on my end know that, listen, guys, you know, I'm going to be on X show on this day. The episode is coming out or whatever. Because at the end of the day, if it was that person who approached me you know, to, to get me on the show. That person is interested in, in hearing my story. They're interested in hearing, you know, your story. And it's more content as well, you know, on their side and more content on our side. 
So for me, the first thing would then be to share that and let people be aware of the fact that, hey, guys, this is going to be coming out. Learn more about me, even if it, I put it up on my story because mm. artists have, you know, on, on their pages, um, they obviously have schedules and, you know, preference and what they want to, to sort of be revealed on their pages and all that. But a little share, even if it's on your story with something that disappears in 24 hours or or anywhere, just letting people know that I'm going to be appearing on XX show. And yeah, well, what, 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 what do you reckon some of the good practices are as, as a good guest? Mm, like even if you just share it, like we make promo content that you can share so that you don't have to come up with your own thing if, you know, and like you say, there are temporary shares like stories. So you don't have to fit it in if you've got a really curated feed, you know, and like, I don't know if if you don't share it. It's kind of like, did you not have fun? Yeah, <laughs> I had a nice time. Like I would listen to this. So you know, I don't. Maybe some people don't want to like listen to their own shit. You know, or maybe they're trying to reach our listener base. They're looking outward. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's very interesting because there's there's different opinions to this. Like, with I had a, a similar conversation with Andy, and he was saying, um, he views it, <laughs> he views it as a sign of disrespect, because um, his justification for that was, it to him it comes across as the artist not taking a, 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 that particular brand that they're on not taking them serious enough or not thinking or thinking to themselves that this brand isn't big enough for me to want to be seen uh, as being associated with them. Like I'll make an example. If someone, if we take artist A and he had to make an appearance on a podcast that started out, say, yesterday, a uh, podcast on about 100 streams or something like that, and they were a guest on that show. And then Artist A then goes on to a bigger platform, maybe goes on national radio and has an interview on there. You know, there's more of a chance that you'll see them mentioning that, hey, guys, catch my interview on X radio station. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my music on there there's more chance of that person promoting the bigger platform than there is them promoting the smaller platform that came out. I don't know if it has to do with clout, maybe, you know, having that association with the bigger brand as opposed to having that association with the smaller brand. I don't know what it could be. Do you think that's like a possibility? If we're looking at it from that front... Must be nice if you have so much going on that you you can't share this one podcast interview. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like do 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 you echo the same sort of thoughts as as him though? In that it's sort of like a a disrespectful thing. Like you don't really see us in that way. So you, or maybe there's like a bit of shame in there. Like I'm yeah, ashamed to be on that. If I take it personally, then I'll be like, "Are you embarrassed of your interview? Like, did <laughs> yeah. we not make you look like you?" Yeah. Maybe they have a different relationship with social media than yeah. we do. You know, that is, this is why I say like we can't fully demand it from people, yeah. but it is good practice. Yeah. Like it, it is one of the ways you can build a relationship. And the thing is like we we could refer you to someone else because if you like make a really good impression on us in terms of the professionalism yeah. when you're communicating, if you're you know, if you're on time and stuff like that, if you if you show up, then we can say, Hey, new podcast, have you had these people on yet? Yeah. Like, you really yeah. should. We had an amazing ex experience. Mm. So that's the thing. You, your first job is, you know, always a play for the next job. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So so I guess the conclusion in, uh, when it comes to that then would be um, from the host perspective, don't force your guests to do anything. Uh, as me said, just sort of a rundown how you generally, you know, operate and how you generally do your things. And then I guess the rest would then be up to them, you know, in terms of what they can do or what they, they aren't able to do and all that. 
I would also say that if you're gonna book um, an interview, yeah, do some research. Like, look at some of their previous episodes. Number one, to know if you should do this interview because maybe your audience and the podcast's audience don't match up, and you're actually you're trying to get a certain type of person. Like, you're trying to locate your niche, yeah. and this is how you signal to them that they, you know, belong. So. If you are a certain type of person and you're looking for a certain type of listener, then research the podcast's audience because you might say stuff in that interview that really just doesn't hit home because no one's listening for that stuff. I'm not saying you have to switch up who you are, but there are different facets of you that you can explore as an artist depending on what type of podcast you go on. Research what that people are going to try and sort of get from you to know how to play to your own strengths in that experience. And we actually have really good examples of that uh, coming from both sides, actually, means It's good that you said that because even as a host, you know, it's something that I learned from you as well, is that it's really important to, to at least have some kind of research on your guest as well. And it's something that was, we have prime examples on things like that because um, remember when you had Kaylee, Kaylee Golding, mm. um, when she came in, she was like, you know, it's, 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 it's essential for you to learn and, and get a bit of background, you know, when it comes to the artists that you're going to be chatting to. And then, um, also on the point that you were on about the, the, you now being a guest and going on a particular show and doing research and stuff, um, you will have an example where, uh, someone may be coming on the show and maybe talking about their ability to pull women or something like that. And it's sort of like it's out of place if you compare it to everything else that's happened in the past. Uh, these are just things that you, you're able to, even when you're listening to Sludge, you're able to sort of pick up on some of the points that are coming up. And I think it's, you know, it, it serves, it's, it's something that's really cool to sort of re reflect on and sort of learn from as well, you know, through people actually doing certain things, um, you know, through us doing certain things as the hosts and maybe a guest doing something and using all of that as, you know, things that you can learn from. So, yeah, I, I'd echo what, what Mies is saying about learning about the platform that, you, that you're going on and all that. And, and be kind to your editors. Yeah. Learn... As, as much mic technique as you need to, to just be a little bit considerate towards the people who are going to have to sift through your vocals. And noise in the background. Yes. Yeah. We Definitely. know we can't always have perfect circumstances, but some effort would be so nice. Yeah. And, and being on time as well. You know, if 7 o'clock must be 7 o'clock. I know that I messed this one up when you were doing the visual jitsu episode <laughs> but you know you you like time time needs to be you know i mean with with us though we we we're like i'm not gonna say we're willing to but we've had moments where if, say for example we had set up at seven o'clock and then maybe you know some technical difficulties on artist side or maybe on our side and then we leave a bit of room for that kind of stuff i remember one of the episodes we waited for a very long time and then we I think the artist never rocked up or something. Mm. But then it's also just expecting and, and just knowing that that kind of stuff can happen as well. Like not everything will turn out the way that you'd planned. And it's just a matter of just pushing through. Either way, it can't be like a hindrance or a point where or something that sort of discourages you. It's going to be part of the process. You can't avoid it. So It's also good to check in with each other on the day of the interview, whether it's host or guest. Like Just check in with each other to make sure that you both remember and you're both ready and nothing has happened since you've made the booking. Like Especially if you have uh, quite a lot of time between your booking and your recording and your release. This is another point, like you're, you're balancing schedules on schedules. So you really have to make sure you, that you're good at like managing your time. And you also have to be a little bit resilient towards things not working out because life happens all the time. In fact, like if life didn't happen, it would be weirder. So expect chaos and expect 
you know, human error. Yeah. And, you know, while on, on schedules actually makes, because you are a very big part of that when it comes to sludge, you know, what would sort of be your, your, your basic sort of go-to, you know, tips and tools in order to be able to pull that off, like, sufficiently? Is there, like, a certain, do you write things out on, like, a notepad? Do you, you know, date them on an app? You know, what would sort of be the, right way to go about setting up schedules and stuff okay so if you're working in a team then definitely get a team communication space so that you can chat about certain things and that you can send files as well and then your schedules like you will probably have a team schedule and then a personal schedule and depending on what your responsibilities are you should basically beta test your production cycle so track how long it takes you to get an episode from start to finish before you plan this whole schedule of when are you booking guests when are you recording guests when are you editing when are you making the promo because you also might need a highlight reel Um, when are you communicating with your guests in order to get media from them and when are you planning to release? Because you might have to prompt them as in like, your episode's coming out in a week, yay, super excited. Like, let us know if there's something special you want to do to prepare for it. would you do differently if you had to start your podcast again i would probably be more patient uh when it comes to you know releasing and rushing to release something because that's how you then get episodes like the first episode so starting out could have been a lot smoother if we just sort of did a bit of research um you know, in terms of how to uh, release something that people would be able to listen to, you know, something clear, you know, something. And this is something that was actually there in a lot of, like, the very in the very beginning, quite a few of the episodes. Like, you'll listen to that and you'll even hear that there's music playing in the background. Some, some of the episodes, the music is loud. You can't really focus on what is being said by the guest and all of that. And those are things that could have been sort of avoided if we maybe never rushed into it but at the same time it's also like a blessing because you know it's like you were saying earlier you've got something to compare it to and you're able to see the growth but uh yeah i think with definitely getting into it having done more research you know in terms of how to release something that people can consume well and not something that will mess with your ears and be inconsistent you know in terms of sound and all of that there so it's it's both a good thing and a bad thing and yeah i'd say that's the biggest point and and on your side like when when you joined in during the pandemic um and looking at your journey from them till now what would you sort of change you know with your experience I would probably given myself a longer rehearsal stage in terms of hosting because that was really new to me. Mm. And that was something that was the most challenging thing. Yeah. But you were so good at it, dude. Like, I remember. I was trying so hard. Yo, that king. What, what was the first one? Was it the King Slave episode? Jasmine. No ways, dude. Jasmine, we had, we had, we had Jasmine. After King Slave. No, King Slave was the next one, the very next one. Because remember you you were like, Who do you want to speak to? Yeah. And I was oh, like, Yes, King yes, Slave. yes, King Slave. It's not yes. Benjamin. So oh, yes, Musa. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I got them mixed up. So even even like that's cool. Like we knew him when he was still King, King Slave Boris. Yeah. 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 We're part of the archive. 
Yo, it's incredible. Mm. It's incredible. But yo, I, I I wouldn't say like obviously it's it's what you you would have you know looking back now something that you would have preferred to have done, but just witnessing the growth and having that as a starting point, it's incredible because. To anyone who even listens, like I'm pretty sure they'll listen to the Jasmine episode and they wouldn't be able to tell that it was your first time. I certainly wouldn't be able to tell because you were so comfortable and all that. But then you just keep you just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger with each episode. And yeah, it's incredible, dude. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So and I think even with what you were saying earlier about how, you know, you speak as you go, things like, you know, if 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 you're wanting to if you have a way as someone maybe who's starting out a new thing and you've got a certain way of doing things, definitely don't be afraid to sort of switch it up. Like even the whole seasonal thing could literally be something that we decide, hey, after the 300th episode or something, guys, let's do seasons now mm. or whatever. So changes. And another thing about change as well is sometimes it can be a very rough transition. Uh, it may take some time to adjust. I forgot what it was. But one of the things that we sort of changed or started doing, I remember I was like finding it very difficult to get get into in the beginning. But then eventually it was like, hey, it worked out. Was it the editing of like really long? Ah. Because we did switch. When we switched to online um, recording, our episodes got longer. We were doing 40 minutes and, and maybe even more. I think it was the time when we did, before we transitioned to doing one episode a week, it was that time when we were doing two episodes a week mm. because it meant that I had to, yo, dude, it was so bad. Mm. I had to, because you know how we create the content as well. So it would have been the episode edit uh, and then creating the promo content that's going to go for the three days. Because I think we would have we released episodes when on the sun, on the, was it the Sunday? Mm. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was just content and then Friday would be the next day when it was just a lot though yeah. because it was two episodes and there's just no, it's, it almost seemed like every single day there had to be something whereas with now it's like there's enough room to actually chill mm. in you need to make content in advance yes this is the lesson we have learned like do not make and release on the go well preference if you can unless you have like unless you have a team and you have one person who just does the editing and then the hosts are just the hosts, you know. But if you're all playing multiple roles, then like I say, you're going to have to literally see how your life fits into the, the podcast release schedule. Because you can't just make it dominant. You can't just be like a slave to this. Yeah. So it's it's good to make a few episodes in advance so that you have that catch up. And also like... As a backup episode, just in case something happens, maybe a guest doesn't show up, and now you have like you've you've said to everyone, we release on Wednesdays, and Wednesday's coming. You can always pull something from the archives. Mm. So have a backup, and like maybe create a few episodes in advance. Definitely help. It's what kept us going for this whole year, actually. In fact, like we've got content going out like all the way to what is it November. Even we have one beyond. one artist booked for November, but we are currently booked up until I think I think the second week of August. Yeah, yeah. So she's... which brings in another layer of communication because now yeah. there's like a month between an artist coming to record with us and then releasing. So we have to send a reminder email. Yeah, and say hey, it's coming out. Yeah, remember when you did this thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have to be conscious in like episodes where like. Maybe we'll talk about a current event that might not age well. Or if we say this is happening tomorrow, it won't be when it's release date. You are so good at that, dude. Because you you mentioned that, okay, so on episode 178 is going to fall on the 16th of June. So we need to think of something about the youth or whatever. (laughs) Something I would never have thought of myself. It was like, you know, it's always like, okay... We're looking, you know, maybe something will drop on Christmas or something. And then it's like, it wouldn't register in my mind that we need to have something Christmas themed. But then you're able to identify that and be like, ah, no, this day is going to be Christmas. So I think it does help to be 
to to have someone in the team who's super vigilant and super like who can actually spot the stuff coming because it just otherwise it doesn't make sense you know if you speak of something and it's sort of not relative to that date or something it wouldn't make sense so yeah but at the same time i feel like we we aren't saying don't do episodes on the fly but it does kind of help take the pressure off you because if you're going to be doing everything on the fly and just relying on you know today i've set up a meeting with so and so and we're going to record and the episode needs to come out tomorrow and that person drops you then you've got nothing for tomorrow mm. so and it's better to be consistent yeah that's the thing if you can if you can trust a platform for something then that's good you can kind of trust sludge to release every wednesday and mm. that's that's like a promise we've kept yeah. that's a guarantee for the guest and for the listeners do deadlines do deadlines help this is something we've spoken about in some of the casual sex episodes mm. just setting a deadline for you just knowing at the back of your mind that okay this needs to be done and published uh so that it's ready for wednesday um if i'm starting something you know is, is it would it be helpful for me to have deadlines or can I just sort of chill for now? Well, it depends on your own personal workflow. If you're taking responsibility for an episode and you know that you take a week to edit or something like that, or um, who who's the, ne- who's the next person in the process? Like if I edit an episode that we've recorded together, I need to get it um, to you on time so that you can have enough time to make the promo. So there are other people in in the chain, essentially. So you need to be able to manage your time so you can be considerate as a team member. Yeah. Yeah. Would I be able to create a podcast solo without a team? If you are your own production team and you already know how to do those things, um, like there's not a steep learning curve and you already have access to all of the, the software and, and stuff that you need and the equipment, then maybe, maybe if you're really organized mm. and if it is your full-time job, that's like what you're planning to do, then maybe you could. But, I, you know, at that point, if, if you're doing well, then why not outsource? Why not involve a team? Like why not include team members as part of your growth? Yeah. You know, it would be nice to get to a place where you could, you know, like when you when you do this for enough time, you start to realize what parts of it you hate yeah. and what parts of it you really enjoy. And then you get to a point where you're like, I should do the things that I enjoy and whatever else there is, someone enjoys that, we should get them to do it. Yeah. You know, like you don't like scheduling. I like scheduling. Yeah. I'll do the scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, it. And as like we're speaking from something that's sort of been working for us as well. So, you know, that, that is some really good advice there, you know, um, in terms of that approach. Uh, someone asked me once about the whole sponsorship thing and how it works. Do you need a sponsor? Do you not need a sponsor? What is a sponsor for? So in order to be attractive for someone to endorse you and give you free stuff, you need to be able to give them something you need to be able to offer. In our case, our our whole shtick is that we interview the underground. So we're not going to be able to pitch to these sponsors that, oh, we have a listenership of one million. You know, mm. we're we're not, that's not our angle. So if you have something to offer and you genuinely have a brand in mind that everyone is basically doing an act of service, like the brand is getting a kick out of it in terms of the audience type that you have matches them and what the product, the product that they offer or service is valuable to the audience member. If you're playing the connector mm. in a real sense, like, that's good as a sponsorship. As long as you have your terms outlined in terms of what you all expect from each other, then it can work. But if you don't need a sponsor, like for us, like Sludge Underground, we are the ad. Mm. We are basically saying, here's an, a new person. You should take this as the most surface level thing and then go dig 
Mm. Go listen to their stuff. That we are just the little cherry on top. There's so much more. So we are the sponsor. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And I guess if you're wanting to get like a, a sponsorship, it's also got to make sense, as Megan said. Actually, you nailed everything you said there. Perfect. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I want to like repeat it and stuff. But as Megan said, there's got to be, you know, both platforms need to be getting something out of it. So. I guess in conclusion, is it necessary? Maybe not in the initial stages, you know, considering that there's not really much to offer mm. from your side when you're starting out. Maybe have it be a goal that you work towards, you know, and also if it is in line with your kind of approach as well, um, maybe that would benefit more on the mainstream side or whatever the case may be. Uh, I guess, yeah. Mm. There are other ways to collaborate as well. Yeah. Like you can have guest hosts or you can have a different type of episode where other people are allowed to contribute, like our roundtables. Yeah, yeah, multi multiple ways uh, to do. And, co and collaboration actually is important because you're able to then also uh, reach, you know, another audience and stuff, you know, your your guests or the people that partake in that sort of collab would also then push it out to their people who will then be introduced to your stuff, vice versa. Mm. So, yeah, never be afraid to to collaborate. And a lot of people are under this this assumption that, oh, just because now I'm starting a podcast, it means I'm competing. Dude, this, <laughs> on one of the nights when we had uh, uh, at the firehouse uh, for Finish Up Fridays, the last one that we had, uh, there were these guys on Florida Road uh, that were there. Uh, they saw us with the with the slide stickers and stuff, and we, you know, we handed them out to like, okay, here, you know, your podcast, whatever, awesome. And then the one of the guys was like, oh, so you guys are a competition, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we we also we're gonna be starting a podcast soon, and you know, we're gonna be talking to hip hop artists and all that. And I feel like that mentality is, I guess, it's cool to have like a sense of composition in a way but it would be a lot better to be to start off on the footing of well, why don't you just collaborate mm. with other creatives as opposed to sort of you know because at the end of the day if we are pushing for something similar if they're going to be starting a podcast and they're focusing on underground hip-hop artists it's something similar to what we're doing and we could then you know be able to help help all collaborate and then have their audience check out our stuff and have our audience check out their stuff and we all end up both of us end up winning at the end of the day as opposed to it being a competition thing and them you know being a little island and we being our own island and mm. at the end of the day we're all trying to serve the same purpose i don't know what do you write collaboration yeah. or competition collaboration over competition any yeah. day is competition good though at all or is it just 100 percent bad if it's something that motivates you, maybe. Yeah. I think better quality work gets produced when more minds are involved. Mm. Because, yeah, it's just there's, there's more. There's a fuller perspective. What would you say about the concept? Uh, moving on to the concept of... The concept it. of Sludge Underground. Yeah. Has anything about our mission to uh, be a supplement to radio? Has anything about that changed? Do you think we've sort of come far in terms of that mission? Where do you think we're sitting? We're we're two hundred episodes in. Yeah. Who who can say that? Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. And I think considering that it's been two hundred episodes, uh, considering that we still as much as we it is more mixed now than it was in the beginning, as much as we'll have the odd artists from overseas will have the odd mainstream artist on the show the majority of the stuff that comes out is still true to what it was initially so i would say anything that anything else that sort of isn't in line with the philosophy we've set out would be just an added bonus it would be there to sort of add a bit of a spin to things it would be there to serve as part of just additional content it would be there to serve as a sort of 
source that people can sort of learn from. Like I was saying earlier, if you're getting mainstream artists, you know, we're learning, you know, through the eyes of someone who's made it in a way and what their experiences are like can be a source of inspiration. So you can literally, with the concepts, it's just about not losing sight of the initial concept, but you can always add a few bells and whistles to sort of enhance that further. Mm. I don't know if I'm making sense, though. What yeah. do you rate? Well, yeah, like don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah. Your first idea might not have been the best idea, so allow yourself to have more than one idea. That's the type of creative freedom that we would like our guests to have. So we can also have it. Do it however the hell you want to do it. No one's set any rules. Says, no, this is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. You've got that leeway to sort of be flexible, I guess. Yeah. As long as it's in the long run, it's it ends up being consistent enough. You know, like consistency, is, as Megan was saying earlier, is important. Mm. Statistics, are those important? When it comes to a podcast and stuff, how do they help? This is something I've actually genuinely wondered about as well in terms of what the importance of statistics is besides just notifying you of how well a certain episode is done or how badly an episode is done or just seeing just in general, you know, some feedback on what people are, are listening to or I don't know, how would you say statistics help? Like, is it something that someone should pay special attention to look if you do have a specific mark in mind and you want to hit that goal you want to hit a certain age bracket you want to hit a certain demographic then cool if it's going to cause you anxiety if it's going to cause if you're going to get insecure or if you're going to depend on uh, the emotional boost or the confidence of getting good feedback or or a lot of attention that won't keep you stable it's not a coping mechanism that you can really rely on there are so many things kind of working against smaller creators which is maybe why people sometimes resort to trying to make more sensational content than just exploring yeah because even the experts will tell you that listen like you need to observe and just watch you know what the statistics say because maybe they'll indicate that Okay, because this has the most streams, it means that this is the kind of content, the con, the kind of, the kind of content that people gravitate towards. But then it's sort of like if you are now, if that particular episode was just vibes and there wasn't a particular formula, uh, or maybe it did consist of a particular formula that maybe you were trying out for the first time, or maybe you did not enjoy it. Maybe for that particular episode, you had planned something out. And obviously the indication would be that, okay, that would be the approach you need to go for. That would sort of, it. I guess it would increase your chances then according to, you know, professionals um, or increase, you know, stats and all that. But at the same time, I feel like it would kind of mean compromising on, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Maybe you don't feel like creating that kind of content. Mm. and now you're sort of boxed in because you're under pressure now because well this is what the people like yeah but what about what you like yeah you always have to escalate as well yeah if we made any changes to sludge that have like come from feedback have we made any like serious decisions where we're like okay our people are not responding well to us we must adjust i wouldn't necessarily say it was due to feedback, but I think just general observation in terms of how the times are now, it would be very similar to what artists are trying to do where they're no longer releasing full-on like albums. They're releasing just music in bite-sized chunks and stuff, EPs and all that. So I guess with that in mind, I feel like we are now wary of of that kind of stuff. We are wary of time we are wary of not wanting to go on too long but at the same time we don't really restrict ourselves when you're recording i feel like it's just naturally like on average we'll take about two two zoom sessions but mm. sometimes we, we we do have like say one one session like we did with uh talisha um talisha and Manic Tea. Manic Tea. yeah like where we just had the one session and with that, we were sort of wary of the workload 
that we had and we sort of were like okay we will just keep this one short so i guess we we time is the one thing that i feel like we are wary about but also it's not like a very strict thing mm-hmm. because you do get like episodes that are like the the longest episode you've ever had <laughs> you and i did that one with rainland rainland magazine yes. ella audrey ray yes mm. yes that there was probably the longest two what is like two hours i think it was four sessions yeah two hours yeah the editing on that my gosh but you know it's 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 like a once it doesn't happen all the time so i feel like time is something we worry about mm. it's preference because you'll get episodes like you'll get podcasts like the joe biden podcast that goes on for like three four hours and people consume that people that consume that kind of stuff are his target audience so I almost said don't go too long, but in actual fact, it's preference. If you've got people that will are willing to spend two hours on a podcast, those are the people who are the target audience. Mm. And anyone who isn't willing to do that is not the target audience. I think the one point that we've been very resistant on in terms of suggestions is doing visuals. That always comes up. Yeah. It's like a lot. And people are under this impression that if you do that, it will boost numbers and more people will get onto that. Is it just that you can also upload it to video platforms? I, or do they genuinely like want to see us talk? Perhaps. I think that is more... Of the people that have approached me, it feels like it's more interesting watching people talk as mm. opposed to listening to them. Mm. But then... I'm so confident in what we're doing, dude. And I never used to, like before, before you, like we got to speak about this, you and I, it used to be something that used to be like in the back of my mind, like, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to implement it and all that? But now as time went on, I was like, no, you just aren't the target audience. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't. It's part of the niche. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. So if you're wanting to do that, you know, go and check out Who's a friend of ours that does a, a visual thing? Um, you can check out Robbed Radio Network. Okay. They do video podcasting. Go check them out. Cause yeah, then shout that's, out. That's their, shout out. That's, yeah. that's their vibe. In Durban, we recently had, oh, Zama, she does visuals. She yes. interviews. E-Table Connect is there to give you that kind of content. Mm. Um, a work colleague of mine who recently started his uh, called Unfiltered. With Oscar Msomi, he's a he's a colleague of mine. Uh, we work together at the court. He's got some some visuals. Uh, it's a podcast, and so there's very so if we aren't doing that, then clearly you know you're able to to find other platforms mm. that that do that. So shout out to them. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Are there any other points that you reckon we that we haven't touched on? Tell me, tell me about crediting. Yes. Yeah. Well, how could you forget? Dude? Let's talk about this. Yeah. So I I feel like um, cre- crediting is a very, it's a it, it falls part of uh, a similar sort of group uh, when it comes to being a good host and being a good guest and all that. There, uh, if you're the host, try and you know credit anyone who's. This is a, a conversation that I actually had with um, Oscar, who does Unfiltered, in that it's really good to just sort of, if someone designed your logo, just credit them off the bat. Um, if someone, you know, was responsible for doing the sound, credit them. If someone was responsible for shooting the video, credit them. And crediting someone, it isn't even a strategy, you know. It's mm. not even, it's just common sense. It's sort of like equivalent to like a thank you. I acknowledge what you did and I appreciate it. And through that act, then other people are able to then see that other person's work. And they are also more inclined to then share whatever you've put up because, well, you've credited them. And you never know what gig you're booking someone. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. If you edit an episode, then maybe that's part of an equivalent to a CV, building up yeah. a CV or a portfolio work that independent creatives rely on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, no matter no matter how small, dude, mm. no matter how small, I'd say, what would you say from 
from an artist's perspective, is it sort of like a similar thing mm. to what we're doing? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The more credit you give, the more people can actually know about your music. Because if you're crediting your producers, then they can go into that producer's profile and see what else they worked on. And maybe they'll find something that makes them like your stuff more because of their own personal reputation with the producer or with someone else on your team. Yeah, definitely, dude. And I even say like the smallest, even the smallest thing, like even a, a referral, dude. It's something you don't need to, you don't have to, but it just makes sense. So how how do you get onto our podcast? Like what do you mean? As a guest, if you're oh, looking. Yeah, sorry. Or if sorry, you'd like yeah. to be a guest host, how do yeah. you get into contact with us? How do you ask the big ask? The general one would be emails are best. We try to be as accessible as possible. So if we ever get like a DM and all of that there, we try to, to respond. And basically thereafter, you know, just emails would be best. Um, and then obviously things like your EPK and all that do help, especially for like the content and stuff for us to read up on the kind of stuff that you do. And if it also consists of, you know, all your images, things that we'll be using for the episodes in terms of the content and what we're going to be talking about and everything we're going to be putting up on social media. Yeah. So just the basic, basic, you know, sort of entry thing would be email your EPK. You know, I don't know what else do you Well, just your links. But it doesn't even have to be that formal. The more info you give to us, we're not using it to like vet you for quality and be like, oh no, they're not good enough. We're using it to see what we can ask you about because we don't want you to regurgitate information that you already have in your bio. You already have on all of your taglines. We know that already. Yeah. So we want to go to the next step in the conversation and we want you to elaborate on some of the things that you've said that you're about. Yeah. We want to connect a few dots in terms of your work and the more you give us to bite into, the more nourishing it is. Definitely. And even from uh, a creator's perspective, uh, reaching out to artists, what I've found helps is obviously email would be ideal as well. I feel like that's a staple. So if you ever approach everyone, I guess you can do DMs, but I feel like some artists take emails more seriously. I don't know though. Maybe you have a preference for the host. Yeah. Like maybe you really want to be interviewed by Marcel. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you should probably request his part of the communication, send him a DM or, you know. Yes. If you have a actually, preference like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you think I would enjoy your stuff more, then you are welcome to send it to me. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. Just don't be weird. <laughs> what is weird? Don't be weird in the DMs, bro. <laughs> What's an example there. of weird? I work there. It's work time. <laughs> don't approach you about anything else but work, yes, basically. We have yeah. a task at hand. Yo. Yeah. Heavy. Okay, yeah. So so even for, for as a host, you wanna get someone on, then yeah, obviously if, if if you have a preference or whatever, then and you wanna target that specific person, then obviously, you know, reach out to them. But uh also even in your when you're inviting, you know, acts and you wanna invite someone, I feel like email structure is important because mm. it's like, you know, let the person know you know, what they're getting themselves into. So what the mission is, you know, who you guys are firstly, why, you know, you, you'd like to have them on the show, um, you know, past, you know, people who have been on the show in the past, that that really helps a lot as well. Um, what the mission is, where it's going to be recorded, how it's going to be recorded, where it's going to be released, you know, just give them as much information as you can. Mm. so that when they jump in they sort of already know what to kind of expect and then when you guys do eventually link up then it's just ironing out any you know questions that they may have had or clarity or whatever just keep communicating with each other until the entire cycle is sort of done with and even after that if you're really nice Mm. you never know when you could come back for a part two or a roundtable discussion 
yeah. Any final remarks in terms of well wishes to new podcasters and potential guests? Thank you to everyone who has been listening to the podcast from the get go. Uh, 200th episode, we couldn't have gotten this far um, without being motivated by the people that constantly tune in. You know, whether it be every week, whether it be once a month, whether it be only when your favorite guest is on, uh, it just still serves as motivation and that someone actually is listening. So we really appreciate, we really appreciate you as a listener. Um, and yeah, for everyone who's wanting to start a podcast, uh, I just want to say, don't look at someone, don't look at what we're doing and be like, oh, this is, you know, difficult you know i'm not going to be able to do this it's daunting um but at the same time you know don't look at it and be like oh i can do better than what these guys are doing and then jump into it just do it because you want to do it you know don't sort of compare yourself to other people because that can also be put like a dampener on things if you look at people that have been doing this for a very long time and you look at how they're doing and you want to automatically just start off and be on that level can get a bit demotivating so try to just just be in your own lane and just work at your own pace and don't compare yourself to anyone else just run your own race and you've got this yeah mm. and i'm really hoping that we're still gonna push on dude and just reach new heights and just keep experimenting with shit and not taking ourselves that seriously because i feel like <laughs> Sometimes that, you know, once you start being like, oh, yeah, we start doing it, we, no, just chill mm. type thing. So, yeah, that's. Um, any new things that we are going to be sort of trying out? We are having a small break. Yeah. Very, very small break. But there will still be content flowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were kind of, we're kind of dabbling in events. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. And then we obviously had a bit of progress on the YouTube front until mm. one or two things happened out of our control. So YouTube was still something we were playing around with behind the scenes, I guess. Uh, obviously, events-wise, events, events wise, working with uh, homies at the firehouse. We have a new line of hoodies. Yes. We yes, do. hoodies, hoodies as well. Yeah. Oh yes, and casual sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we. All the winters. Yeah, uh, hoodies are are available on casual sex. Uh, merch in general, dudes, like t-shirts and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Like we never, we were not the kind of people to always plug ourselves or whatever. But I guess at this point, turn it episodes down. This is the first time for everything. <laughs> so yeah, those are on. Those are on there, and uh, they, they're they, very comfortable. <laughs> And they look great. <laughs> Very warm. Oh, mm. dude, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's available on Casual Sex. Check them out. They're mm. doing great things. Really awesome to be the first podcast on Casual Sex. Shout outs. And really grateful. And we just hope it's, it's, it can be the beginning of more podcasts and different platforms getting on Casual Sex. Yeah, I mean, that seems, that seems to be pretty much it, eh? If yeah. anyone has any... Further questions and all that, we are very open. You guys can actually communicate with us about anything. Just drop us a DM, please. Yes. Like begging. We you. like talking about this stuff. Yeah. All the time. We're very chill like that. So don't be afraid to shoot your shot. We're human beings as well. So Yeah, until next time then guys, are we closing out? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sick. Do we need to do handles? No, you know where to find us. We are in the <laughs> underground. Okay, awesome. That's that's it then. <laughs>